Morning, 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 everybody. How you doing? Welcome back to the Spurs Talk Show. Oh, I'm Sean Butler. Well, there's Bugsy Malone leading the charge, as she always does on this episode 252, I think, of Tottenham Walks. I'm so far lost with what number we're on. I will figure it out at some point. Um, how you doing? Hope you are all happy and healthy, doing the things you love for the people that you love doing them with. Please do me a favour, guys, like you always do for me. Hit the like button on the video. Hit the subscribe on the channel if you haven't already. We're actually very close now to 11k, believe it or not. It's been absolutely mind-boggling growth over the last five or six weeks. Welcome back to all of the old subscribers. Welcome to the new Make Yourselves at Home. Hit the notification bell and drop a comment. Let me know your thoughts on today's topic. And we're back to transfer news, views and clues of the day. And we're going to stick mainly to the Tapsoba and Van der Ven story. To catch you up, and if you've been living under a rock, last night at about six o'clock, the Dutch journalist, the Dutch Telegraph, I forget the guy's name, he puts out a tweet saying, Tottenham have agreed terms for Mickey van der Ven, and that it's supposed to be about a 30 million euro, 35 million, 30 million euro deal. So I get all excited, jump on a stream before it's really confirmed, because you know, you have to be first, if you can be. <laughs> doesn't matter if it's true and uh no it does i'm not kidding and then as we're going live romano comes out and says actually there's nothing really that's that updated it's not the deal is not done it's not a here we go they just agree personal terms meanwhile tottenham are still very much in talks with edmund tapsoba and that deal is still very ma very much on paul o'keefe coming out saying it's one or the other not both and paul o'keefe does have a good track record of being right and we, I think, have now figured out why or who he knows. There was this guy, if you remember a couple of weeks ago when we were on Henry Wright's channel, <laughs> who, like he had like 300 subscribers or uh, followers on Twitter. And he put out the, the check mark and the medical regarding James Madison. And everyone piles in and then they find out that not only was he right about that, he was also the first to know about Vicario or Raya, sorry, he was the first one to know that David Raya was off. And then Paul O'Keefe brought that out saying David Raya was off, and then it turned out to be true that it was off. So this guy, out of nowhere, has suddenly got like a perfect track record of giving out insights. And we were laughing on Henry's channel about how quickly his followers are flying up. And he's all using the cryptic, he's doing the like emojis and the pictures of like medical professionals, <laughs> rather than just coming out and saying it. It's, uh, it's all very funny and, in, and in, interesting. And apparently, so I get sent this uh, DM from a guy called Stuart, who's a watcher of the show, shout out to him. There's a screenshot of a text conversation that then gets shared around on Twitter. And I think that it was this particular guy who feeds Paul O'Keefe the info, who was saying that Mickey van der Ven and his agent and his family were seen at London Gatwick Airport or Heathrow Airport or something last night and that he was going to Tottenham and we're everyone's getting excited about it turns out that actually it was true because because this morning we find out on from Romano that Mickey van der Ven was in London did meet with Ange Postacoglu was super excited with the exchange the interview and has come back and has told Wolfsburg that he really wants to join Tottenham and that the deal number that was suggested by the guy from the Telegraph is actually right. It is about £30 million. But Tottenham are still yet to pull the trigger because they're still discussing things with regard Edmund Tap Sober. And as I just said, Paul O'Keefe said it's going to be one or the other, not both. But this morning you've got Rudy Galletti, who's an Italian journalist, who was saying that Tottenham are incredibly close to signing Edmund Tap Sober. So can we entirely rule out the possibility that we won't sign both? I said it yesterday, you know, Sabra and I were talking about it last night as well. The value of getting both of them in is incredible. If you get both of them done with everything else we've already done, the window you know, is, is like looking superb. If you get one of them and then the other person that you bring in is a long lay, or if you don't bring in long lay, then 
you'll need to go somewhere else. I don't know, the window feels a little bit, a little bit less enthusiastic in my mind. But if you could get both of them in, you've got Van der Ven who can play left sided centre back or left back. You've got Tatsoba who can play left sided centre back or right sided centre back. You've got Ben Davies who could play left back or left sided centre back. You've got Yudoji who could play left back. So you've basically got three left backs and you've got three left sided centre backs. You don't really need Longley if you bring in Van der Ven and Tatsoba. And then on the right hand side, you would have Tapsoba, Romero. I'm not entirely sure if you actually need a third. You probably don't. Although there's that outside chance that with Tapsoba going away on African Nations duty, if Romero's injured at the same time and he doesn't have exactly a perfect injury record, then I don't know what you would do in that scenario. So, but you know what? Like at some point you can't have you can't have five right-sided centre backs on the off chance that four of them are injured. So at some point you just have to roll the dice with Lady Luck and see what happens. But I just think it would be so superb if you could get both Van der Ven and Tapsober in. I think then Tottenham would be cooking with gas. And I think you could look at the window and just go. I mean, there's still things, still concerns, still question marks, still maybe need another midfielder. In fact, still definitely need another midfielder. You can make arguments about having another forward or wingbacks, fullbacks, whatever you want, but you can't do it all in one window. And generally speaking, you'd have to just sit there and say, it's been a superb window bringing the business in. But does it, does it require both Tapsover and Van der Ven to be that eight out of 10 window, nine out of 10 window? If you only get one of them, and if it's Van der Ven, then are you still happy with if it was Van der Ven and Longley? I think then you've got a lot of left-sided players. I don't think you've got anyone behind Romero, unless, of course, you're keeping Eric Dyer. And if you are keeping Eric Dyer, then you're one injury away from having a very like flaccid back line that is weak in all of the areas. It needs to be strong to be able to play the high line back four. So... For me, I, just, I think it would just be so good if we could get both of them done. I know all the reports are saying it's one, not the other, but is there a little part of you that thinks that maybe, just maybe, we are going to get both and they're just trying to keep that story close to the chest so that no one else comes in and gazumps or messes around? Is there any chance? Let me know. How confident are you that we could get both? Or are you on this particular story believing the most logical argument that it's probably Fabio Paratici doing what Paratici does where he spins plates and goes and has multiple conversations, multiple discussions with multiple clubs, essentially agrees deals on like handshake terms and then eventually pulls out of it all, all but one of them. And how do you feel about that, by the way? Like, I thought we were done with Paratici, but just whether he's still you know, cooking or not, as a concept, like, I personally wouldn't appreciate going into negotiations in good faith with a club like Tottenham Hotspur, with Daniel Levy and Fabio Paratici, shaking hands on an arranged deal, just to be told a week later, oh, sorry, no, we're going to go in a different direction because we actually shook hands with several clubs. I find that a really sort of bad faith style, unless you are very open when you go into the meetings and say, listen, just so you know, this is a, in principle agreement we're trying to forge here, but we are doing the same with several different clubs, so we've got to keep our options open, bear that in mind. Because I just think unless you're doing that, then you're, you're making other clubs make plans as well. They have to have contingencies. What happens if we sell this player or buy this player from Tottenham? What happens if we don't? Who do we get in to replace them? And I think that you're just, you're making a mess. Every, like it's, you're going dis, to disrupt unnecessarily several, several clubs' plans just to find a good deal for yourself. It comes across quite selfish and... I think that those things can come back to bite you on the backside later on when you need them later. They might remember the fact that you messed them around and say, oh, I'm not dealing with that guy again. And we know from Daniel Levy's history that that's not exactly a rarity. He's got a pretty stinky reputation as a club that a lot of clubs around Europe want to negotiate with. So, yeah, look, for me, it's not, um, not the ideal way to do business, but it is... 
I don't know, it seems to work for Paratici in the past. I would just love it if this, on this particular occasion it, it looked and felt like it's Tottenham actually wanting to bring in two very, very capable, amazingly solid centre-backs and that we'll get both of the deals done. We can move on Sanchez to... I think, who, who was he linked with recently? Was he linked with Villarreal to replace Pau Torres? I think that was a story we didn't talk about yesterday, but we should. I think he would fit the Spanish league. Davinson Sanchez, you know, I think he's a capable player. The stats prove he's a capable player. I just think he's not really cut out for the pace of, uh, of the of Premier League football. I think he would be far better suited in Italian football or in Spanish football. Not so much like Dutch or German or English football. But, so he could be gone. Eric Dyer, could Eric Dyer be going out the door? Is there clubs in the Premier League that would want him? I would imagine so. He's still, he's got the English tax thing. He's an England international technically. And I think a lot of clubs would probably look, look to, to bring him in. Maybe clubs that are in the bottom sort of five or six teams in the Premier League. Maybe if Crystal Palace end up losing Anderson or Gwehi, maybe they could take in Eric Dyer to fill that, fill that hole. We could move them on, bring these two in. It'd be absolutely superb. The only other story I've got to tell you about today, guys, I'll keep it very brief, brief is uh, Harry Kane. We've got to brace ourselves for a £90 million bid. The journalists out in Germany, Sky, Sky Sports Germany, are saying that Bayern Munich are not letting go of this one and that they're going to put together a bid of around £90 million, which is the number that Tottenham apparently have told them that they would have to have as the handle to even consider it and that Bayern Munich are going to try and do it. Which I find interesting because I think Bayern Munich have just laid out 40 or 50 million for Kim Min Jae and they triggered the release clause for Napoli's centre-back. And of course, if you're triggering a release clause, it depends on how the contract is structured within the clause. But typically, because you are forcing the club to sell, you are not, it's not a willing negotiation, then the selling club have no obligation to have to you know meet in the middle and, and and help you structure the financial side of it in a way that suits you so they could just ask for all the money or most of the money up front and if they if that's what Bayern Munich have had to do with Kim Min Jae then as a club that's got the 50 plus one ownership rule in place it'd be very interesting to find out how they're going to be able to structure a deal that could also see Tottenham have their you know, have their hand put out and, and, and shaken. It remains to be seen. Listen, if Harry Kane does end up going, then Tottenham have got a lot more work to do in the transfer window, trying to figure out how to rebalance and reshape that forward line. I'm okay with it as long as the number's right. As I said uh, on last night on the Cheese Room podcast, by the way, great guys over there. Really enjoyed my, my uh, debut on their show. Get over and subscribe to them as well. I said last night, if Harry Kane is intimated that he wants to leave, and according to these reports he has, then Tottenham chairman Daniel Levy, to me, has, I think he has to take it seriously. I think you could only call it negligence if Harry Kane is allowed to leave and walk away for free at the end of his contract because Daniel Levy was too stubborn and didn't see the wood for the trees. If Harry Kane does end up leaving, we're going to have a lot of talks going on on these walks for the next month, looking at all the different players that Bugsy and I think could help close the gap. 30 goals a season is difficult to uh, replace, but there's ways to do it where we, are, we ask other players to contribute more. Players like James Madison are going to help in that vein. But we'll talk about that on another show, guys. Lots to think about, lots to discuss. Let me know your thoughts, whether or not you believe the reports that we are going to sign one of those two. If we do just sign one, how do you feel if it's a long lay and a tap sober centre back transfer window? I'm not sure how I feel about it. It's it's good. It's a good it's a good step for tap sober or long or Van der Ven, but you know we're replacing a 65 goal defensive concession centre back with the same guy. <laughs> so. I don't know. I'm going to leave it there. It's been 14 and a half minutes. It's been nice talking to you this morning. Like, subscribe and comment, guys. And as always, bye-bye.